2 a.m. we have alarm system. We screaming like a hell. Uh, it's, it sounds like this. This sound in the middle of the night signified a Russian missile had struck close by. It was February 28th, and Russia's invasion of Ukraine had started four days earlier. I woke up, we went to the bunker, and happy birthday, Roman! <laughs> Roman's uh, mom made a home, homemade cake, and uh, it was kind of, yeah, happy birthday from the bunker. Yeah, and then uh, alarm system end, and we go back to our beds. Unforgettable experience, I would say. <laughs> this is Stacy and Roman. They're the founders of Asamic, a platform that matches companies with designers for design tasks with 24-hour turnaround. We have now more than 100 designers connected. Most of them are from Ukraine. With an office in Ukraine's capital city, Kiev, the two founders spent their time building their startup. Typical day was kind of like uh, uh, as a hustle founders. Mainly it was like spending your work time in the office, meeting new people, talking to people, having interviews. We've been living nearby in Kiev downtown and had kind of, kind of normal life. That all changed as 2021 came to a close and Russia began moving military forces next to the Ukrainian border. Russia though is still sending more troops to the border. Stacy and Roman now had important considerations unfamiliar to most founders. We, we would understand the risk uh, uh, of the region where we, we've been living. We've been constantly talking with our people, with our designers uh, about potential, uh, potential threats. We shared advices how uh, they can secure them in advance. And on February 24th, Russia attacked Ukraine, a free and democratic European country. These are among the darkest hour for Europe since the end of World War II. I woke at 7 a.m. from my mom call. She said the war started, go away to safe place. I just, I called Stacy and woke her up. And we started an evacuation of our people, of our, uh, uh, of ourselves as well. We've been just moving out from Kiev because Kiev being bombed. Even when we've been riding out of the Kiev, we see a Russian helicopter flew over us. There is no safe place in Ukraine now, so we're kind of safe. safe. But it's it's hard to ignore because it's still we hear air radars every day. Any place in the Ukraine is not the safest place because uh, mm, there are threats of uh, missile attacks. So we didn't expect it, this full massive scale invasion. Um, so it was a surprise for us. Uh, even we've been preparing for some escalation. Once the two founders found safety for themselves, their concerns and focus shifted to their Islamic team. To be, to be honest, the first days were so much about panic and stress for the people who were denying the reality. And it was hard to deal with everything that is going on because it was like living a horror movie or a dream. But for us, having a plan in advance just help us to focus and execute. It was more like a robot mode where yeah. you're just executing step by step. You know what to do. You know what funds do you need and things like that. The first month for me was really intensive. We've been helping everyone, so no time to, to be depressed or to feel sad or something like that. You're just active, you're executing. Executing this emergency plan was key to helping those that needed it most. But the emotional toll and trauma exposed itself once that initial hard work was over. Uh, for me, the hardest part was when the photos from Bucha were released. What I had was a week of uh, actually staring at the wolf. It was the week where I, it was hard for me to focus. I was staring most of the time just at the wall, thinking my thoughts. That kind of photos, I, it's hard to explain. Because, you know, it's, it's not only photos, you know people from there, you know people who lost their home there, you know stories from there, so it's kind of personal every time. And this is what makes it hard. You just cannot be disconnected or be far away for, from that. It 
after these uh, horrible photos were, were released, we discovered a lot of raping cases and uh, we had a few girls and one, one of them was in occupied city. So actually a few days straight, we've been thinking how to hide her. Uh, what instruction, instructions should we provide her? What her relatives should do for like invaders to not find her? These were maybe the, the, the most fears that I had related to the safety of my people. We, we've been kind of like paying for, uh, we call this kamikaze drivers. It's a person who know safe roads in very dangerous locations. So they could, ri could ride to our person, pick them up with their relatives and evacuate them. This was the last person uh, getting to the safe place from the occupied city already. We're so happy that we just have them. Safety threats are the most important. So if there are some um, any new common safety threats we see in some region where our people or where we are. So the first thing we trying to eliminate any potential problems with safety. With control over basic health and safety, the two co-founders were still left with a company to run. Once we are uh, done with uh, basic safety, we are focusing to growing our business and getting new designers, customers. And I would say uh, that we've been in touch with our community and with our people uh, during the whole that time, focus on uh, building business. Even, even despite war, we we operating on a, uh, on a third day, we've been operating like normal and accepting new customers. Yes, military wins the battles, but economics, this is who yeah. wins the war. So we decided to stay here, to spend here, to, to bring more foreign money to our economy, to onboard more designers who lost their jobs. The whole country turned into a startup mode. And imagine you living in country and whole country is a startup and you need to help to win. And you can do anything. You can focus on the economic as we focus it with uh, Stacy, or you can go to fight, or you can kind of like uh, do a bread for warriors and uh, bake them and give them for free. So you can do anything, but it's a very special atmosphere, I would say. Startup mode, uh, but on a country scale. That countrywide startup mode has produced extraordinary resilience by the Ukrainian people and has helped slow and even stop some Russian advances. I am the most optimistic about Ukrainian people, about Ukrainian society. So much power in supporting each other, in uniting as people. So I'm just proud of these people who are kind of like so strong and they able to protect our country. The optimism these two co-founders showcase are necessary for any founder building a company, but even more so for those fighting for the freedom of their country. Now I think it's more like optimistic future. We discussing how we would rebuild the country once this would end. That's, I would say, one of the most active discussions. We are still strong, we would resist and help Ukraine and uh, we would win. If you are able to help Ukrainians who are fighting on the ground or looking for safety, the following organizations need your ongoing support.